Shocking news out of Texas Tech men's basketball. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on the latest in Texas Tech athletics here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. We're giving you the latest breaking news when it happens. Nobody else on YouTube is doing that. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Fardaz Amak, the center from Utah Valley, has entered the transfer portal for the Red Raiders. He has missed all season long with a foot injury and he will not play a single minute for the Red Raiders in his career. A shocking development right now as we're not even to Big 12 play yet for the Red Raiders. And the guy that I was told by a staffer of Texas Tech men's basketball was the guy they were wanting to build their entire offense around. Instead, he hits the portal playing absolutely zero minutes for the Red Raiders in this one. Absolutely shocking. Let me know down below your one-word reaction to Fardaz Amak entering the portal. It, it, again, for me, this is shocking. It's one of those deals where I had heard reports from people I know within the program, people I know outside of the program that covered as well on a national level that, hey, he's not very happy right now with what's going on. And for me, when I hear that, I think, okay, he's not happy about the injury situation. And to be honest with you, I couldn't blame him. I'd be frustrated as well if I hadn't got to see the floor and you know the type of role you were going to have on this team. Again, remember what I said just earlier in this video. They are planning or were planning to have him be the focal point of the offense. It was going to be a completely different offense with Fardaz as the starting center alongside Kevin O'Banner, right? But we're not going to get to see that. It's not going to happen. He's entered the transfer portal, and now a, it's kind of a domino effect in terms of what now for Texas Tech, right? You wonder what's going on in this program to where this big domino, no pun intended, falls over, right? What happens now? Obviously, you've got a guy in Daniel Bacho who can step into that starting center position, but outside of him and Kevin O'Banner, you don't feel very good about your depth when it comes to big guys. And let's face it, Kevin O'Banner is a great man. He, he's a great basketball player, right? He's great. But he doesn't provide that seven-foot size you need in the Big 12 on a nightly basis. And you had two of those guys that could be impact guys in Fardaz Amak and Daniel Bacho. Now you got one. And you don't know how healthy Daniel Bacho is at the time of this recording, right? You hope to have him back for Big 12 play. But now you're down to one legit seven-footer on this roster that you trust to play. What kind of impact does that have on Texas Tech? Is it potentially a positive one where you play a little smaller and you get a little bit more of those rotations like you had last year where it's just, hey, Kevin O'Banner's our five and we're going to space the crap out of everybody and hopefully we can you know just bang down low with Kevin O'Banner and help double team when need be. But outside of that, and then Daniel Bacho, what do you have down low that you feel comfortable with? This isn't a knock on KJ Allen at all. It's just he's not that guy yet in terms of what we thought Fardaz could be right? Outside of those guys, are you trusting Robert Jennings? He's a true freshman. I really like him a lot, but he's not at the potential level that a 23-year-old Fardaz Amat could be down low in the post for you. That's the biggest difference for me in all of this, right? Is you had a guy and potentially two guys in Kevin O'Banner and Fardaz Amat that were veterans. They know how to play college basketball. That is huge when you talk about having one of the youngest teams in Texas Tech program history. Remember, you have seven lower classmen, and a lot of them are playing valuable minutes for you, right? Now, what do you do in the front court if you're Texas Tech? There's a lot of questions now um, in terms of you kind of felt like if you were a Texas Tech fan, and I felt this way just watching the team and covering it, hey, Tread water in the front court with Bacho and Kevin O'Banner in terms of maybe them playing a little bit more minutes than you'd like until Fardas comes back. Once Fardas comes back, those minutes will stabilize across the board. That way, those guys are fresh for all the Big 12 play, and hopefully you can uh, you know make a deep tournament run that Texas Tech has done in the past few years. So when I look at everything that's going on for Texas Tech right now, I, I think the biggest thing is what happens to this front court. Again, Daniel Bacho and Kevin O'Banner are great. They are great players, right? But God forbid if one of those guys goes down, what happens, right? 
Like, what are you going to do if you're Texas Tech? Because, again, Robert Jennings, good, solid freshman. I like what his potential is. K.J. Allen, he's taking a step, but you don't want him to play more than maybe, what, 10 to 12 minutes right now at most, right? So when you look at what's going on, this is an impactful loss for Texas Tech. And once again, I cannot say this enough. He is 23 years old. He knows how to play college basketball. And when you have the roster that you do at Texas Tech currently right now, he was invaluable to what you could have potentially for this team moving forward. And not to mention the defensive impact that he has. Listen to this. This is what he did while he was at Utah Valley. And now there's probably going to be a drop-off, but it's fine. He averaged 19 points per game, 13.6 rebounds, 1.3 blocks per game this past season at Utah Valley. He had offers from Washington, Gonzaga, Iowa, Texas, big-time programs, right? But he chose the Red Raiders. Not to mention, he was a two-time Western Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year and totaled 27 double-doubles, tied for the most in the nation with Kentucky's Oscar Tashibwe. Right? He is an impactful player, and now you lose him without him playing a single minute in a Red Raider uniform due to a foot injury. It's shocking news. There's no way around it, and then the questions come up now where, what the hell's going on in the program, right? Like, do, do you have those questions now? For me, I, I trust Mark Adams and what he's doing and everything, but this does get the gears turning a little bit in terms of, okay, well, if this is happening right now, are there other players potentially thinking about doing this? Um, what does this mean moving forward for players' roles? How is this going to impact some of the coaching aspect of things? There's so many potential dominoes from this because, again, I've mentioned it earlier in the video. Fardos was going to be one of those guys for your offense, if not the guy where it was built around. And that's from a staffer on the Texas Tech men's basketball staff. Right. That isn't me just making that up. That's what they told me not even a week ago. Right. So they were excited to get that cast off of him. He's now in a boot. But instead of ramping up his recovery over break and really trying to start pushing it towards the start of Big 12 play, I don't think he was going to play in that TCU game. But maybe, you know, January 14th, about a month from now, I thought, OK, he has a chance to potentially play instead. No, he's in the portal. He, he won't play a minute as a Red Raider, as it stands right now. Just absolutely shocking news. Once again, let me know down in the comments below your one-word reaction. Again, mine is shocking. I, I didn't see this coming. I'm in contact with some of these guys on a weekly basis, and I got no hint of this um, until this morning when one of my buddies said, fireworks. That's it. And I knew right away what was going to happen um, just because, hey, he had mentioned it a couple other times, and now it happened. Um, but once again, Fardaz Amac, the prize transfer of the 2022 recruiting class for the Red Raiders, has decided to enter the transfer portal yet again without playing a single minute in the Scarlet and Black. Shocking, shocking news. Once again, I am RC Maxfield. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long. There's not a YouTube channel on Texas Tech Athletics that is giving you breaking news like this as it happens. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.